Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 281. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to discuss Captain Phillips mm-hmm. in honor of its release on this uh, Friday, October 11th. Yes. This is the uh, true story of Captain Richard Phillips and the 2009 hijacking uh, by Somali pirates of the U.S. flagged Merzerk. Alabama, the first American cargo ship to be hijacked in 200 years, if you can believe that. I, I think that's, well, that's crazy. But I think it's also equally crazy that this only happened four years ago. It happened yep. four years ago. Three years ago, the dude wrote a book about it, and now there's a movie. I feel like the probably the moment that book came out, someone who already knew the story had already had a deal worked out and was like, just wait, as soon as that guy writes his book, boom, we'll buy it. I mean, like, it's with the way movies turn around nowadays. If you think about it, though, like, especially with something that, like, occurs in a modern era like you people want to get on that zeitgeist exactly. as fast as possible i mean exactly. honestly four years it kind of seems old at this that's point. actually a good it's point. like yeah. I, I was like was that that thing that happened a while back yeah that's true yeah so it's not fresh and maybe that's a good thing for yeah. people because it was not quite as fresh and they're mm-hmm. not just like this is like watching the news all over yeah. again but i think one of the few things that you maybe want some distance more is politics related because people have still have a strong opinion like game change that was what four years after the, the election yeah so. yeah um, I will say though that it never hurts to have Tom Hanks no, coming into something. He really, no, I'm totally on board with that. It really, really doesn't. Um, just today, I actually uh, put something on the Twitter for you about someone pieced together something they called Tom Hanks the movie, where they put a made one linear story out of a variety of his films, and uh, awesome. it went like, you know, Forrest Gump to cast away, or Forrest Gump to Apollo 13 to cast away to Captain Phillips. Pretty good stuff, and that's. I mean, there's so many things that they skip. I mean, like oh, I know Philadelphia. Oh, I know, like but I mean, just didn't make it like there was like one character like goes into space, crash lands on an island. That's pretty good. The yeah. ship picks him up, gets hijacked by Somali pirates. Like that's yeah, pretty good. I pretty mean, clever. And you know, is there anyone more likable than Tom Hanks in film? Like, I don't think so. Like he's just such a friggin' charming guy. Like, yeah. I think about like I just saw Runner Runner, and though that film was not great, I mean mm. Ben Affleck. Justin Timor, both very charismatic yes. fellows, but I don't know if there's anyone more charismatic than Tom Hanks. Yeah, he's got he manages to be charismatic and likable, and that's usually you. I mean, I think the, the closest you could get after him, but he doesn't get roles that really highlight it as much as maybe like George Clooney, as far yeah, as charisma no, and likability. Right. But he doesn't have those like down home, like kind of more just happy stories that Tom Hanks is willing to do, as well as obviously the serious dramatic roles. Yeah, I feel like George Clooney. Um, is more, I don't want to say desperate, mm, um, for um, recognition and acknowledgement of being a serious actor. I see. Probably from his TV days, he's become a little bit more. Um, Start out, you know, you work on Roseanne, well, you got I mean, <laughs> it's not like Tom Hanks wasn't on Bosom, buddy. That's true, that's true. Um, but, you know, I feel like he feels much more a desire to prove himself, yes, whereas Tom Hanks just feels cool just doing whatever makes him happy and it or might interest just, him. Yeah, it might be how long they've been in the industry, too. If Tom Hanks is probably by this point like, you know what, I pick projects that I care about, I don't get the rest of the time, who cares? Honestly, I don't know. I think they've both been probably fairly close to them the same amount of time. But that being said, you know, it's, it's interesting that they went... Um, for a more uh, local feel for mm. the pirates in terms of that yeah. getting people who had no background. Yeah, they wanted acting. actual people from the Somali culture. Who were not like professional actors. Yeah, and I think they ended up having to go to like Minneapolis was the um, highest concentration in America of mm. Somali of Somali uh, culture that was not just that was more than just first generation immigrants. So that's where they actually went to go and then they were expecting they're like, okay, we'll find the biggest community, we'll go there, we'll get some. They ended up with like seven to eight hundred people showing up wow. to apply. Wow. And the main the main pirate and yeah, the Barak Bar- Bar- Barkhad Abdi. Mm-hmm. And the other gentlemen are all actually his friends. It's it's wow. like him That's and cool. his group of friends were the ones that they picked. That's probably smart to keep some sort of level of chemistry. You know the fundamental problem I have with a film like this is the same I have with any prequel. Mm. Is that the, the film was based on a book that was written by so Catherine you know Phillips. you know where you, it's going. You have, kind I of mean, thing. You might, I might not know exactly where it's going, but if he wrote the book, but. On the flip side, while I totally agree with you because it kind of ruins the suspense of like what's going to happen end? in the end, people who like real life stories, for them it's not about the end, it's about the journey. So for them it's less that, oh, we know Captain Phillips lived and more, 
what he went through to get there. In the same way we, you know, Apollo 13 wasn't any less amazing because we knew That's the outcome point, of it. Yeah. It was about seeing the process and feeling that tension while it was occurring. Also Tom Hanks, of or course. Or is it more awesome when they change history like oh. Inglorious Bastards? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is always more awesome when you change history. So uh, it's like, eh, or he Abraham dies. Lincoln vampire. Maybe runner. he Come does on. die. I'm gonna say, right? you know, we don't know that for sure. I think it's interesting that you know, I wouldn't have thought about it when I first looked at this, but directed by Paul Green, uh, uh, Green Greenglass. Yeah. yeah, mostly action Born. related. You know, he uh, he did the uh, Bo- Bloody Sunday, Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum, Green, Green Zone. Zone. Yeah. yeah, United ninety three, I think as well, which is the. The plain September one. 11th yeah. one, yeah. And it's, I mean, you got a guy who's like more known, in fact, maybe criticized in the latter ends of the Bourne trilogy for being the fast cut supreme action. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point, and maybe this isn't quite as much of an action film, but if anything, it, I think it might work better um, than the Bourne movies. I know a lot of people love the last two Bourne movies as their favorite ones. Really? Oh, yeah, a lot hmm. of people. Personally, I think I was just rewatching the first one, and I think. I, I I might like the first one the best. I like, think I think it's for me. It's like a star the the first Star Wars trilogy. It's one, two, three. And it's it's not like um, I don't like the other two, but I feel like his style of this sort of handy cam. Um, I don't think he did type, the first one, right? No, he did no, not. Okay. Yeah, Doug Liman did that. Uh, yes. Um, but it's it's like the handy cam stuff is. I mean, it's it's sort of. It becomes so frantic that it's hard for me to really even engage yes. sometimes. Yes. But I feel like this movie would be more conducive to that sort of handicap. I agree. Because it's like it's putting you as a person within mm-hmm. the experience. On that boat. Where it's just like the frantic action is just supposed to make it feel like more frantic mm-hmm. action. Where it's like this is sort of almost like a first person fly on the yes. wall perspective. Where it's like you are part of this experience. You are going with mm-hmm. Captain Phillips <laughs> on this journey. Yeah. And you're fighting for survival with him. And I mean they shot it all on in the water. Like they spent like a good 40 days days shooting this film out at sea like they dedicated themselves obviously there's probably some indoor sound stages stuff that they did but i mean they still took the time to actually you know keep it relatively yeah. authentic i also think it's interesting that one of the things that paul greenglass wanted to do is he made sure he had this idea in his head that he wanted the somali actors to not meet the rest of the principal actors until the moment that they stepped on Pulling board. Pulling Goonies. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, actually, he described in an interview, he said, you know, there's always that moment that you don't think about as an audience, but when you're making a film, there's always scenes the crew gets excited about being ready to do. Like, that. oh, we're going to have this one moment, like, in, it'd be in Heat when Robert De Niro and, and um, Al, Pacino. Al Pacino actually have their scene together and things like this where you're, the crew is kind of build up. So they all had this, like, okay, two to three weeks into shooting this, we're going to actually have, or, you know, whatever duration into shooting this, we're going to actually have these people meet and Tom Hanks said he was terrified when the Somali actors first walked in in their first scene because he's like you got these skin and bones guys with AK-47s in their hand acting really intense that he's never seen as normal haha laughing people he's only seen yeah, in their role what they're really like yeah and so he said it was really really like emotionally he felt it when they walked in does Tom Hanks really need any additional help yeah. to like drop? It's for some, everybody. Else. Like high quality it's for acting. Everybody else. I'm sure it's Tom <laughs> Hanks can do whatever the fuck he wants. And- also, interestingly enough, they had um, actual real Navy personnel take care of Tom Hanks after his character is rescued. Spoilers. Uh, they actually had like real people in there dealing with it, rather trying to be more legit, rather than being like, "Let's make it cinematic." And are you okay, sir? Like they had actual dudes doing all the rescuing. So, again, kind of trying to get in that with the steady cam- with the handy cam, you know, mm-hmm. or kind of getting you into that action, which I think is in a story like this what impresses people about it. Why people bought the book? They want to see what the dude felt at each moment. It's funny, like, the film has gotten a fairly uh, good response. Mm -hmm. Alan has already seen it, and he said it was good. I mean, you know, it still suffers from that thing of, like, it's not as dramatic when you ultimately know the outcome, but it's much, if you enjoy the journey, it's going to be a good one. Um, But, like, a lot of critics have said it's a comeback for Hanks, which sort of surprises me in some ways. When did he ever fall? Yeah, that's sort of my (laughs) perspective. I mean, you know, films was incredibly loud, or incredibly close, extremely Mm -hmm. loud, or incredibly... Extra, no, incredibly close to Extreme Life. Yes. Um, but, like, you know, that film seemed to get bashed because it was a Best Picture nominee. And yes. Like everyone's like, oh, that's what's a, that movie with Julia Roberts, Charlie something? Oh, uh, Charlie. 
Daniel's Charlie? War, Charlie Wilson's War. No, not that one. The other one more recent where he's the older student. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's had some, nah, recently. But, he, I mean, it's not like it's been so bad that he's, like, slunk to Razzie's level. He's still Tom Hanks. Yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> it's, I, I feel like uh, a lot of people have taken him for granted. I mean, there was a point during, like, the early 90s where it's almost every single year he was nominated and mm. winning Best Actor. And it's, the so, Forrest Gump Apollo 13 yeah, days. I mean, it's certainly, like, you know... Uh, He's not doing that every year yes. now. But at the same time, I don't feel like he's trying to do that. Yeah, do you want him to? Do you really want Tom Hanks to be in a movie every single year trying to compete for Best Picture? I mean, maybe you do, but maybe. I don't. I would rather it be like every couple of years based on something he actually cares about that's worthwhile rather than being like, I gotta be in everything. I gotta be like Jason Statham with action movies and be in yeah, one every year and a half. You know, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's so funny, like, the, I, I, people almost become tired of him being so great. It's sort of interesting, and maybe it speaks to how great she is, that Meryl Streep still seems to get that like default nomination almost mm. every year because it's like, <laughs> did they do something better than Meryl Streep? Yeah, like, yeah. Guess not. Yeah. Let's put Can you? Yeah, <laughs> so. But like, there seems to be some like loss of enthusiasm for Hanks just because he's been so good for so long. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm glad to hear that he's getting. Yeah. Some more recognition because I think the dude is just phenomenal all the time, and I, I I think he deserves to be. Considered. I don't I don't know if this is why people do it, but one of the things that I personally have just experienced is seeing as time goes on, I feel like he has I won't say not aged well. I will say he has tried to maintain a youthful look or character that he maybe shouldn't embrace. I feel like this is a little bit more on that other side of trying to go more the distinguished older actor rather than the he's probably middle-aged, but maybe he's not type of thing, which I feel a lot of it, like the Terminal and a lot of his last films kind of feel more like a he's trying to play someone a little bit younger than he actually mm, looks and appears. Maybe. But that's just a visual thing for me. I see his face and it looks too photoshopped and, and plastic surgeon. I mean, he definitely has generally been playing films that are a little bit more on the lighter side, for yeah. sure. I mean, Terminal, Catch Me If You Can. Mm-hmm. Um Charlie Wilson's War. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, they're definitely not as heavy materials like Philadelphia. <laughs> but then again, I mean, he's always been sort of doing stuff. I mean, you think about Splash mm-hmm. or Forrest Gump even. I mean, there's yeah. there's been a fair That's amount true. of like He's done a good job of altering it. Maybe maybe just now that he's doing a little bit more on the dramatic side. And for the record, it was incredibly close and extremely loud. Very dramatic film. I mean, it's about a kid who loses his father during 9-11. I mean... Yep. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's like kind of a nice guy before he dies in that movie. Like, sorry, but <laughs> sorry, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Question mark. Whoop, yeah. Whoop. I don't Actually, know. Wait for you guys. There we go. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm a huge Hanks fan. Yeah. And I mean, even though this is a story that's already had mm-hmm. the outcome. Uh, known to the general yes. audience, I'm still looking forward to it. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be one of those ones that I'm not going to probably expect a lot out of when I see, mm-hmm. but I have a feeling I will probably still be relatively entertained and taken along for the ride based on that fact. Yeah. So, so let us know your thoughts about Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, let us know your thoughts about Captain Phillips, yeah. Paul Greengrass, would. any mm-hmm. of that stuff at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in or at MacGuffinCast on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Podcast. Mm-hmm. Phone number 323 761 9842. Harass me and Spencer 24 hours a day. Please do. We're on uh, iTunes, mm-hmm. Blip, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers to slap on your friends' faces. Please do. Uh, give us some stars on iTunes for your weekly commute and uh, thumbs on YouTube. And we'll uh, comment. Check you out next time. Mm hmm. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.